Hello, my name's Ron Sands. Welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. Something uh, quite different today. It's about um, boxing and street fighting, and specifically um, something that happened to me many years ago, and how I think boxing, my experience in boxing, worked into that. What this is not, this is not me giving out advice on how to handle yourself in a street fight or how to handle yourself. Um, in a self-defense situation. I'm not qualified to do that. I've never been in the military. I've never worked with police forces. I'm a boxing coach. I'm not someone who knows about street fighting. What I'm gonna try and put get across is, is how I think boxing helped me in a very specific instance, a really scary instance, actually. And before we get started, why don't you download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit, That'll join the thousands of others who've set themselves on their boxing fitness or competition journey with the Beginner Boxer Toolkit. You get uh, how to set up your training regime, your home gym, uh, what 10 core basic skills you need to work on, how to set up your uh, training systems, and how to build power, speed, and how to get the right mindset. There's tons of stuff in there, 64 pages, absolutely free. Click the link either below or at the end of the video. Right, let's get started. So when I, we're talking about the early 90s here, when I um, finished boxing, I kind of took up guitar. So we, or when I finished boxing for the first time, I, I took up guitar um, and I used to play with a pal of mine called Eddie. We're still friends to this day, actually. Eddie uh, boxed with me in here. Um, and I'm guessing this is about 93, 1993, 1994. And uh, Eddie, a friend of his, had a, a restaurant up in a place called Southport. I live in Liverpool. Southport is about 15 miles up the coast. It's a Sunday night, and it was kind of like he was looking for someone to do a bit of guitar playing. Eddie's a fantastic guitarist. I was going up to, to kind of try and do a little bit of rhythm support. Um, and we went up and, and, it, and it went appallingly. Eddie made me sing and I am the most dreadful singer and I absolutely annihilated Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. Um, I'm pretty so, sure I saw some members of the audience cry, um, not from any other emotion but disgust. Um, anyway, we, we, we were driving home and this is about midnight and it was, we were driving out of Southport into a quite rural area. And as we're coming out to this particular place, just on the edge of the sort of the 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 urban area and, and and going into the rural countryside, we see this girl and she's stumbling about and seemed weird. Eddie pulled in, I pulled in behind, and he got out the car and, and kind of had a look around, but she kind of disappeared. Um, and Eddie came over to me and said, "It was weird. I couldn't can't see her, you know." And at this time, I noticed this car across the street with a. Uh, two people in it and one had at least one had a baseball cap on and i thought at the time there were there were lots of shootings going on in, in liverpool and in my mind it was a high-powered car i just thought they might have been police on um a plainclothes police officers armed response vehicles um i just thought it was a bit bit weird but you know i said okay well we can't see her let's let, let's move on eddie gets back in his car and just at that moment some lad comes running across the road. I'm sat with my window still down after talking to Eddie. And he starts giving giving me all kinds of abuse. You know, who, who are you? What, what, what are you doing? And we said, well, I'm just like, well, we just stopped to see if we could, we, we, could, we could help the girl. He's going, it's none of your effing business. And I could smell the drink on him. He was quite close. And I felt really vulnerable because I'm sat in the car, you know. Nothing you can do. Someone's just going to start pouring punches through a car window at you. Um, so I kind of like, well, okay, you know, he's going, go on, get out, get lot, you know. I just went like that to Eddie, let's go. And and we drove off. And as we're driving away, I hear, you, Red Escort, stop. So my car at the time was a Red Ford Escort. And I kind of looked in my mirror and I just went, oh, behave, mate. And, you know, I just wasn't engaging. And he's running up the road. And when I looked in my mirrors again, um, the car headlights then were just blasting up behind me, right in my rear view mirror. And I was like, oh my God, what, what am I meant to do here? And he actually came up alongside and then ran me off the road, pulled his car in and, and I was like, I was in, I was really shocked, as you would be. 
And I kind of just went all calm. I looked in my mirror and this idiot still running up the road. And I was like, I just took my glasses off, folded them up and I thought, it's weird, I thought you had to thought, this car has been nothing but bad luck since I got it. Red car, never buy a red car. It just, it, it, it was always something going wrong. Always, you know, someone reversed into it one night and drove away. There was always something, you know, it was just a bad luck vehicle. And then I thought, well, my mum has put the kiss of death. I mean, you know how mums are? Oh, be careful on the way home, son. I just thought, she's just, my mum's put the kiss of death on me. So I took my glasses off, folded them up, got out the car, shut my door, and this idiot driver standing there, really proud of himself, leaning on top of the uh, the door, you know, dead, really proud of what he'd just done, frightened the life out of me, ran me off the road, like it was some kind of movie, you know. And then Mr. Dimwit is still running up the street, um, and the driver's going to him, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him. And as he got close enough, I just, I just thought, bang. So, so I just tried to hit him with a right hand. Um, my strategy was, knock him out, and then we can negotiate with the driver and just say, yeah, look, help your friend or go the same way as him. Didn't quite work out that way because I snatched at the punch a little. Didn't time it, I didn't relax and just... Pump. Oh, if I had me time again, I'd have probably gone with a left hook. That would have been probably the best option for me anyway because I just think those lateral force shots tend to do the business much better. Anyway, he just he goes in, whoa, you know, he's, he's a big look of fear, shock and surprise on his face and then I jumped at him. And I know two things at this time. I know number one, the driver's going to come any minute now. And I know number two, Eddie's coming back. Eddie's not the drive away kind and leave you. I know Eddie's coming back. So I've just got to like kind of handle the situation. So I just think keep keep this, the idiot who started it all, keep them close. Because I didn't want to be in a situation where I had one lad there and one lad there and I'm trying to deal with both of them. So I kept them close. It was on my car and I'm kind of like, pulling him in and trying to hit him and, and I'm thinking the driver's coming any second now, the driver's coming. And then I just felt an impact on the back of my head and he was punching me in the back of the head and that was a big relief, actually, because I thought, he doesn't know how to fight because his hand's going to break before he does me any serious damage. And there must have been four or five impacts to the back of my head. By this time, I'm kind of trying to get my fingers into the first lad's eyes so keeping him close, I'm just trying to sort of really get my fingers in. And he's kind of squawking and squealing and I'm just being really intense with what I'm doing. And these impacts are still going on, but I'm fine. I'm thinking, that's all right. He's, he's an idiot. He doesn't know how to fight. And then he, the driver comes around the side then and his leg came up. So he's trying to kick me in the head. And I, so I grabbed the other fella, the first fella, by the, by the balls. And just squeezed as hard as I could, and he's he's really yelping now. The other guy throws his leg up, and I grab his leg and stand on my tiptoes. And then I hear screeching of tyres slam. And Eddie's so frightened, Eddie thinks that I'm getting murdered. That's literally in his mind. As far as he's concerned, they're killing me. Because it was that serious, you know, this fella ran me off the road. He was like, who does that? You know, it's like mental, just... And he just, like, slammed his car into their car, you know, just to, I don't know, he's just, he just, like, and he jumped out. So by the time Eddie turned, I turned around and Eddie's standing there. So this idiot driver's bouncing on one leg with his leg over my shoulder. I've got the other one by the balls. And it was just the relief of seeing Eddie, you know, I just went to Eddie, grab him, sort him out. The other lad then somehow grabbed me round the waist. And uh, so I had two sheets of ribs either side, so... As with all good body shots, don't aim for the ribs, aim just below the ribs. So I hit him with a left hook, right hook, left hook, and I thought, he's doing well staying up from these. And then the final right hook, he just dropped and hit the floor. And then lay on his back, and I'm stood over him, and his, the exact words he used were, what's your problem? I just literally couldn't believe what he just said to me. I was like... You know, I'm not, I've never swore on one of my YouTube videos. I'm not going to start now. I said, look, you've just taken about 10 years off my life. I said, if you stand up and come at me again, I swear to God, I'll put you in hospital. I swear to God. Stay there. Don't move. And I turned around and went, come on, Ed, you've got to get gone. <laughs> By this time, the other driver, Mr. You know, Mr. Steve McQueen or Paul Newman, Eddie had pulled his, like, his shirt over his head and was just 
hitting him with these uppercuts right in the head. And he said, Eddie, come on, we've got to be gone. We've got to get going. And Eddie just throws the driver then and says to me, <laughs> classic Eddie, Frank, get the number plate. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I've just been through one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. So he tries to get the number plate. And we get in our car. He, and I, we, you know, Eddie drives off and then I drive off after him. And then I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's like these headlights come up behind us again. And I'm like, not again, you can't... What on earth is going through your mind? But what they actually did was blast past us into the night, you know, just... Whoosh. So Eddie keeps driving. And back then, you used to have these things like police, a police house where a police officer would live. But it's because it's a rural location, it's countryside. It's kind of like a, you know, a house where the, the policeman lived and you could call there at any time and, and we knocked there and Eddie wanted us to go there. We, I didn't have a phone, he didn't have a phone, mobile phones, none of that. It was just that he wanted to. Our view was that them lads could have gone and uh, reported us to the police and we'd have had police coming to us and blah, blah, blah. And so we, we kind of went and, and spoke to the police officer, gave him a statement. And it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty terrifying. Um, and I suppose, what, what did, how did boxing help me? Well, think about it from a technical point of view. Just put, technically, the first interaction, I'd made my decision that I was, these guys were going to hurt me. The first decision I made, I tried to throw that right hand and I got it wrong. I didn't time it. Right, if I've got a free shot at someone running towards me, He's got to go. He's he's got to be gone, and I didn't. So so that you know, almost you could argue let me down. The only other bit of technical boxing that I used was at the end when I was hitting them with the body shots. You know, I was picking the location of where I was sinking the shots in. No boxing coach ever taught me to stick my fingers in someone's eyes or or grab someone by the balls. How <laughs> you know how can I do it? How am I meant to grab someone by the balls with that with them on? So none of that helped. So how did it help? And I think it was it was the calmness. I had the self-assurance that it was, you know, I had those skills and I they were gonna help me in some way. Um I was able to think clearly, you know, about what was going on. I was able to build a plan really quickly. You know, if I Eddie wouldn't have been there, my plan would have probably been just keep punching and hope that the driver doesn't get a clean shot in at your head. Put the put the first guy away and really maximum destruction to sort of. But I knew Eddie was coming back, so my plan was manage the situation until Eddie gets here and everything will be fine. So I was able to build a plan and I was able to adjust that plan in subtle ways, you know, um, as the as the driver sort of. Um, as the first shot didn't work, my, my original plan, knock him out, speak to the driver, didn't quite work, change the plan, manage the situation until Eddie gets there, grab the leg on the shoulder, all of these little moments to just adjust what I was doing. Um, I was fit and I was strong. You know, I've no doubt that when that lad came across the road and he saw me, I mean, someone said to me last week, he looked like a bookkeeper boxing coach. I don't even, I don't even look like, I look like someone who makes the tea for a bookkeeper boxing coach. This, you know, this is just, I'm just not, I look like a very easy target, you know, um, and I'm and I'm pretty sure that that lad thought, ha, he's, he's, a, he's a, he was a typical bully, but I was fit and I was strong, I might be little, but I'm training and I'm good power to weight and I'll keep going because you, you've got that fitness. And and probably the most proud thing, I'm not the judge, the jury and the executioner, so when that lad was lying on his back, Plenty of people would have started kicking them all around the floor. I know plenty of people who would have done that and would not have given it a second thought. But I'm not there to dish out retribution. He was no longer a threat. He was that was it. He was he was done. You know, it's not up to me then to start stamping on him or punching him all around the floor. It's not what I'm. That's I'm, the threat is gone. So I'm not the judge, jury, and the executioner. Ego. I'm not there to dish out retribution. I don't need that. No, it's not my in, in my nature. So yeah, and I was, you know, the more I look back on it, so so boxing really minor thing, but psychologically and ability to think clearly in in stressful situations really helped. And I think I was really lucky that night. You know, there's 
There's v very few, there's variables in there, but there's protection mechanisms all over the place from the fr fr from the, the sponge in, in the ring to the referee to your corner man to, everything is set up to, 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 to protect you. On a street, it's not. It's a horrible thing, and I was really lucky that night that I, actually I was dealing with two imbeciles um, who could not punch their way out of a wet paper bag. And, and that number two, I didn't lose my footing, for example. Not everyone can fight. Most people can kick a ball. So if you're on that floor, you know, I, I've always had me in my mind, stay on the feet. And when I got home that night and we went to, uh, got back to jo Joanne's, my, my now wife, and got in bed, and, Got in bed about two o'clock and started shaking my whole body and I shook for five hours. I had to go into the spare room and my, I just went into shock. I just, the, I think the overall thing of what could have happened. I mean, and I wasn't, I wasn't feeling upset, but my body was just shaking uncontrollably. It was really weird. And then that week I got a phone call off the police. I had to go to a police station and um, sat down opposite two detectives and, and they said, okay, you know, plan. he said, um, have you seen the state of the two guys? I'd explained everything that had gone on, and he believed me. And I said, well, what can I tell you? He said, they look, they're in a mess, you know. I said, well, what are you going to do? You know, it's not, that's just one of them things, isn't it? Uh, and he said, well, look, there's no independent witnesses, and you're going to love this. There's no independent witnesses, so um, you either all walk away and forget about it, or we charge all of you with a fray and breach of the Queen's peace. How Dickensian is that? Proper old England, but quite a serious sort of offence, and, and you can do jail time for it. A fray is when a group of people just cause chaos, you know, one, one step down from a riot. Um, so that, yeah, a, a, a disturbance of, of the Queen's peace. Um, but we all went our separate ways, and, and that was it. That's it. Um, before we go, um, if you're into the stuff I've just talked about, um, this book, Centerline Boxing by Chris Wong, Absolutely brilliant. Uh, really nice read. Chris has written this, I think, yeah, October 21. It's really great. It talks you through strategies, methods, techniques. Um, it crosses over multiple... Chris is really smart when it comes to multiple martial arts. Crosses over multiple sort of martial arts and, and gives you all kinds of workouts and whatnot. It's a great little book. I'll put links below for those in, it's on Amazon, I'll put links below to, for those in the US and those in the UK. Definitely worth having on your bookshelf if you're, if you're into your martial arts and how they can cross the boundaries and, and, and fuse to, to, to bring up overall fighting styles. Otherwise, download your book, The Beginner Boxer Tool, because I know this has been a long video. Um, I often feel like I need to apologise for that, but um, I hope you've got something from it anyway. Um, and uh, I will see you next time. Take care.